Zane. Zane. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Hey, Cheryl doing a good job, everybody. Yeah. All right. I love having Hi. Cheryl with us. Hi. <laughs> Is uh, Stacy doing a good job? Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Thank Should I bring her back again sometime? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Only if they come back. <laughs> Only if you come back. Is it good to have Olivia back? Yeah. yeah. Good to have you back. Olivia. I found out she really took a day off just to see all the stuff on her own. <laughs> <laughs> Should I bring her back again sometime? Yes! All right. Thank you. That's for the video, so she can use it against me someday. <laughs> the Sami Dovahim, Boyu, stands for the word city. Very often, it seems to me that uh, my American groups um, feel surprised when I tell them this is not the only Acropolis. And the reason is people plus chance plus matter. If there's no designer or creator, you are just an accident of a big machine that has no purpose for being and is a totally arbitrary thing that just spins around and you are a product of random chance of time plus matter plus energy. So why should I consider you important? You are just a collection of molecules. Your philosophy says there's no such thing as spirit or soul or personhood. All you are is a creature, a machine, a small machine and part of a bigger machine that has no purpose or meaning whatsoever. 
And yet you tell me that I have to treat you with respect and I have to treat you with dignity. If that person is just a collection of molecules, it makes no difference whether I help the old lady across the street or whether I hit her with my car and rearrange the molecules. <laughs> this is how you deal with atheists. You don't come and quote John 3.16 at them. You come at the level where they're at. Where are they at? What do they believe? Take the roof off their head. Let them feel the sun. Let them feel the rain. Let them show that atheism has nothing. It gives them no purpose and no meaning. It's no destiny. You die and you're eaten by worms and that's the end. And someday the sun will blow up because it'll run out of helium. And when it does, the earth is going to go with it. And not only will your bones be gone, but your memories as well. Why do you get up in the morning and say you have purpose and value? You are nothing but collection of molecules. But yet when they go to bed with their wife at night, they say, I love you. But love is a God word. What is love? It's what we have because we're made in the image of God. Without having a God where it gives meaning to the word love, I would say to my wife, I'm having a hormonal reaction for you tonight. I'm not going to get the response I want. Would I? That's right. So there's a lesson to learn about the new evangelization here. We're talking to people that now don't believe in God anymore. They believe in some other thing, new age or whatever. We need to study and learn if we love people, study and learn what they believe and find the weaknesses of it because Christianity is the fullness of truth. It is the explanation of all realities. It is the only philosophy that gives an answer to everything, an adequate answer to everything. No other religion or philosophy does. And so we need to, in a way, a friend, a, a doctor that I, a philosopher that I really like, he says you have to charitably take the roof off their heads and make them face their real conclusions because no one who's an atheist or any other can live consistent with their philosophy. At some point it breaks down and they cannot live consistently. Because if they really believe they're a machine and it's just all hormones, if I go up and stomp on their foot, they're going to say that's not fair, it's not right, you're being cruel. All of those are words that only mean something if a God exists and made us in his image. Well anyway, this is what Paul teaches us when we go here. Find out where the people are, address them where they're at, and then tell them, lead them from that point to tell them about Jesus. So this is Mars Hill where Paul preached. I just read the sermon to you. I suggest you go up on these stairs over here because these are slick as ice. You know, and be very careful up there because everything is uneven. And it's very easy to trip, to slip, to fall down, whatever. So go up on this side, take a few pictures. And by the way, when you're up there, when you're looking straight over this way, it is the Agora the city center of ancient Athens. This is where Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle taught in the streets down there when you look over the other side. This is the Parthenon up here, which was to uh, the uh, virgin goddess. So then you'll see it all from up top. So go up and have fun. Pretend you're mountain goats. That's the plaque, and I'll show that in just a minute, where the Greek of Paul's sermon here on top of Mars Hill. This is Mars Hill, and we're gonna go up these steps. This is where Paul was brought here by the judges of the Areopagus and he explained to them about Jesus very clever by saying I saw an altar of yours with the name of an unknown God and I'm here to proclaim his name to you so this is very slippery up here too and here is the top of the Areopagus or Mars Hill some say these were the seats on which they sat Ooh. okay Here's the group up here exploring. We're almost to the top. There we go. There's the city of Athens below. Deacon Smith. There's the Acropolis, the Parthenon. And I can see the water from the bay of the Aegean Sea. And there's Ross. Paul came up here with the Areopagites and explained to them Jesus Christ and the resurrection. Out of all the places in Athens, this is my favorite. Parthenon, Acropolis, all these other things are wonderful to look at. But I love the biblical things. I love the place where St. Paul was. And this is where he taught. 